Loving God, as always, I invite you to speak through me and in spite of me, that my words might, might contain your truth, and that you have a word to say to each and every one of us. God, we thank you for your peace that passes understanding. God, sometimes peace is just the word that we've heard. God, help us to feel that in the strength of your word. God, we thank you and we, we love you. We give you this time in Jesus' name as we ask you to open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to what you have to say to us today. God, we love you and we thank you. We pray these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, once again, good morning, everybody. This is a strange thing for me. This is a, a, a different thing than I could have ever envisioned or imagined. And, and what I want to do is deliver a sermon the way that I always do, only you're not here. You're at home or wherever you are. And so I, I will be looking at, at you at home, but I'm also sort of thinking about where folks would be sitting. I want you to know in this time I've been praying for each of you. We, we've been, I've been thinking about your, your faces and, and thinking about where you might sit and the different families that might sit here or, or over there or in the back at, at, at tables. And, and I know you're at home, so I just want to send you a, a shout out, a, a good morning. I'm, I'm so glad that, that we're here and that the technology allows us to do this, that it's working. And I pray that it's working all across the nation, all across the world. I, I think about my colleagues that are, that are doing similar things in their own way, trying to, uh, trying to reach people with some good news. We have good news. Our parking lot is empty. Our, our church is empty, but our hearts are full. Our, our homes are, are full in, in ways that we didn't expect them to be. And, and, and so we, we have this, this, this good news. When, when the news on TV, the news on your phone, it's, it's not so good. And, and if you're like me, you just need a day or two without even checking the news. But you find that you can't really do that because the news changes so quickly. It's one thing after the other and, and people are, are hunkered down. And we're, we're doing all that we can to protect ourselves and to protect others, especially those that are vulnerable in our community. So please, it, please stay home. Stay home if you can. We, we think about those that, that can't stay home, those that, that have to be in, in different places, and especially those that are in, in harm's way or that are feeling particularly vulnerable. We'll be called to action as well when, when, uh, when we need to, and we'll figure out what that, what that looks like. We're in conversation every day as a, as a church, and, and I know your families are as well. But we have good news, and it's good news of a, of a Savior, it's good news of, of life that, that won't be stopped by this. That the, the worst thing that could happen is not the last thing. So hang on. It takes a, a tremendous amount of patience, a tremendous amount of, of resilience in this time. And so we pray that we'll be people of hope in this time, in this season. That, that we'll go out of our way to, to let others know that we're thinking about them, that we care for them. If you, if you could do that in whatever way that looks like, as we, as we dream about ways that we can, we can partner with other people, even start small groups in this season where, where we're talking to one another, where we're getting to know one another and checking on, on one another as well. It's good news. As I was, as I was thinking about some, some good news to, to preach on this morning, I, I, uh, I kept returning to this one verse over and over again. It was... Uh, it was on my, on my heart, and, and I know that it's a, a bit premature. It's a, normally an Easter scripture, one that we would read during, uh, during the Easter season and not before. But I, I just keep thinking about all of the folks that are at home, all the folks that are, that are, uh, that are afraid, and they're gathered together. And I think of the time that the disciples were gathered together. This is, uh, to put this into context, this is, this is in John 20, and this is after the... After the the uh, crucifixion, and, and we hear these stories of, of resurrection. There's a, a foot race to the, to, the, to the tomb, and they find it empty. And then we, we hear that the disciples are, are gathered, and the door is locked because of fear. And we, we know that, that 
Jesus has, has entered the room, even though it's locked. And, and he, the, the lock doesn't stop the risen Christ. He's there with the disciples, and he, and he says something to them. And he says it a couple of times in, in John 20. Actually, he says it three times. He, he says, peace be with you. It's a, it's a kind of like a Pentecost event where he breathes the Holy Spirit on them and they, and they have a, a sense of, of, of peace. And, and then we, we find out as we look at our scripture this morning that it's a week later. And his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. I want to look at this one verse. I want to look at it, kind of look at all the words in it, and, and it begins in this way. A week later, his disciples were in the house again. Yeah, I never thought about the time and how it must have gone by for the disciples. What would it have been like? Can you imagine after all that they've seen and after all that they've done and they're all together? And I wonder if the, when they're together and the doors are locked, if they're getting on each other's nerves, if they're, if they're elbowing one another, the sons of thunder are just a bit too much with their pillow fighting. Maybe that's me in my house, or, or, or maybe it's, it's yours as well. And, and they, were, they were there again. It's been another week. They're there again. How many weeks will they be there together? Maybe 50 days in, in our New Testament. We don't know how many days it was that they were, they were together, that they were hunkered down in fear. And Thomas wasn't with them the, the time before, so now we have... Uh, the story of, of Thomas, and Jesus appears again. A week later, the disciples are still there, and the doors were locked. Jesus came, and he, he stood among them. I wonder about where you're at in this, if, if your doors are locked and maybe even more secure than they were before. Maybe you've taken some measures to protect your home and your family or or maybe you're feeling vulnerable in that way. The, the doors were locked. There's a, a sense of, of fear. And Jesus came and stood among them. Whatever life situation you're in right now, wherever you are, imagine Jesus standing there with you, the risen Christ fully present for you in this time. As you're gathering with your family, maybe uh, imagine that Jesus is just Walking in, walking through, you might not even notice. You might not really even see it at the time. The doors are locked, and Jesus came and stood among them. And this is what he said. He said, he said peace be with you. Peace be with you. It's interesting what he doesn't say, too. You know, he, he has told them to stay in one place. That it's not time yet. That there will be a time where they'll feel the power. Where they'll know that, that it's the right time. And they'll go to the ends of the earth and spread this good news. But he says right now, stay put. Stay where you are. And be at peace. Be at peace. I wonder what peace looks like right now for you. Where these glimpses of, of hope have, have come from. For me, we, all this happened so suddenly in our family as maybe it did with yours as well. All of a sudden, we're learning how to homeschool. We're going on walks in the morning. It's very, very special to be able to go out and, and be with our families. This is our, our kids. They're, they're doing a morning devotion. We've been, we've been trying to be intentional about ways that we spend our time together, the ways that we're able to be together in this and the kids are getting kind of restless and so we're learning all these ways that that bring peace and new technology how our how our hearts can be made full and our love tanks can can be replenished by by video chatting with friends in in ways that we hadn't done before by by uh by seeing one another even if it's through our computers uh, it, it's been such a neat thing to to uh to come into in a whole new way we we don't we don't always do this we know we had the capacity to do this we had the ability to do this but we'll probably see each other really soon well what if we don't 
we'll be able to, to uh, I want to say Skype in, but there's been this, this cool thing with Zoom. We, we're learning how to do these meetings with, with Zoom and how to, how to come together as, as people. This is our staff meeting that we had this past week, and uh, others were on the call as well. I just took a screen grab as we were going through it, and, and it, it does. It feels like the Brady Bunch. We're all in this looking at one another and, and, uh, and having meetings this way, and we've been talking about how, how Bible studies could go to Zoom meetings, how small groups. Could, could form and really, really take place in this way to, to bring each other hope and, and encouragement in this season, in this time. Where is it in your life that you find peace, that you find these good news that, that you can share with others? It's so important that you, that you do, that you, that you can communicate with others. One place that I, I love to go, and I can't wait till it's not raining. I went there yesterday in the rain just to walk around, and that Cypress Bend. Cypress Bend Park, the, the place where we, have, uh, where we have baptisms a couple times a year and, and the place where we can put in our, our, our kayaks and, and float up the river. I, I was there yesterday as it was raining and, and it's as if creation hasn't caught on yet. Like creation doesn't know that there's this pandemic. It still wants to be uh, growing and, and, and changing and, and flourishing. And you know what? We do too. We do too. I, I ask God for a, for a glimpse of hope, something to share. And I, I walked up the hill, and there is a, a, a bunch of what looks like grass. But I know that the grass is a little different because uh, the, the different color here, the lighter color, those are blue bonnets. And they haven't, they haven't sprouted yet. They haven't grown. They're, they're just waiting. They will. They'll get out there too. And so will we. We're being asked to wait, to stay at home. That takes patience. It, it takes resilience. It takes teamwork. It takes us all becoming uh, a village together online, however that looks, however that feels. There's a, a source of hope that we have in, in God's word as well. And one of the, the verses that particularly brings me hope is, uh, is Philippians 4. Verse six, and, and you know we think, well, well, what did Paul know about what we're going through or whatever? Well, he wrote this joyful letter from prison, and when I read it, I can like hear this rat like scurrying by. You know, it's the worst. He's he's about to uh, probably uh, meet his death soon after this is written, but he's so joyful because he knows that he's not alone. Even in his jail cell, he knows that there are people out there that are that are he's connected with that he's praying with. He knows that, that, that God is with him in all things and that, that, that he can do all things through that strength of a living Christ. And he writes these words, and, and when I hear them, I'm, I'm like you. I, I admit, they're hard to hear. Don't be anxious about anything. Yeah, right. We live in this sense of anxiety. Don't be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer, by petition, with thanksgiving. There are things that we pray for. There are people that we hold in our prayer. We light a candle in our hearts for these, these folks, but there are also prayers of thanksgiving. What, what are your prayers of thanksgiving? Leave those in the comments. Let, let us know how, how you're thankful. Share this, this good news online with, with everyone. Share it with, uh, with folks that you meet, these, these places where you've, you've, been, you've been just absolutely blown away by God's love in places that you didn't expect it, like a, a bunch of blue bonnets that you didn't, maybe you just thought it was all grass. But then all of a sudden, bam, there, there it was. And the, the peace of, of God, which we, we can't even understand. Sometimes we don't, you know, we don't really understand it, but it's, it's something that, that transcends our understanding. It's something that we, that we feel. It's something that we, that we live in and that we move in and that we have our being. It's a, it's a word of hope. It's this peace of God that we don't understand. And, and what it does is this. What it does is it, it, it guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And so many times I, I think if you're like me, you, you think I have to guard my heart. I have to, I have to make these decisions that, and, and be guarded. no. What, what our job is to do is to, is to rejoice and give thanks. What our, our job is to do is, is to be non-anxious 
presence. Our, our bishop says over and over again, be the least anxious person in the room. I know that's easier said than done sometimes. Our job is to continue to not only find that peace within ourselves, to let that peace guard our, our hearts and our minds and to share that, that peace with others. We get to practice that in our homes as we pass the peace. Uh, kids, if you're at home and you've had an argument with your brother or sister, pass the peace. You know, there's folks that I'm going to be calling in this time, folks that, uh, that I might have had disagreements about before all this happened. Some of the things that we were talking about a few weeks ago, things that we were tense about, well, that doesn't matter at all, does it? <laughs> what matters is that we share God's love, that we love one another, and that we can that we can encourage one another. We don't know what is to come. We don't know how the news is gonna change. We don't know what, what's gonna hit. We don't know who's gonna get sick. We don't know who's gonna be afraid. We don't know who's gonna be in need. We're not, we're not sure. We don't know. But here's what we do know. We know that Christ is with us. And that in that, we don't have to be afraid. We know that, that while this feels like a war, that Christ has already won. And, and what we have to do is participate in that, in that victory. There is a, a line of a, a song that, that I've been singing that, that I uh, want to sing and play with, with my daughter Lila. And it's, it's called Reason to Sing. I look forward to singing that for you or, or having somebody sing that for you. But it has this beautiful ending and it says, will there be a victory? Will you sing it over me now? Your peace, God, is a melody. Will you sing it over us now? Church, if you would just, wherever you are, if you'll just lift your, your hands and imagine God singing over you a song of, of victory a song of hope, a song of peace. May that song resonate in your heart and then may you sing it out your window, in your neighborhood, over your phone, through the internet. May you be a source of hope and encouragement for someone else in this time however that looks like for you.